Welcome to the Psychology World Podcast. I'm O'Connor Whiteley, bringing you psychology news, articles and other interesting psychology related articles. Here where I can find the podcast notes and more interesting psychology related things and here where I can get your free 8 psychology book box set at ConnorWhiteley.net. Now let's get on to the show. Hi everyone and welcome to episode 175 of the Psychology World Podcast with me, Colin Whiteley. And today's episode is on Body Negativity in the Boys and Why Is This Important? And it is Thursday the 20th of October 2022 as I record this. So well, the reason why I actually wanted to do like, today's episode uh, was that I found some really interesting like, research that actually like, looked at this because as I actually say in the podcast episode, one of the sort of unofficial themes of this uh, podcast is that I like to look at the and egg explored areas uh, and the areas that mainstream psychology and wider society tend to shy away from. And, or, and when it comes to body positivity, that is uh, for the most part dominated one well, by the focus on women and, and young girls. Now that, that is not a, a problem in itself because of course we've had the objectification and there are lots of like societal myths and uh, and the constructs built around young women and uh, and the girls uh, for the last few decades. So it's really good to that we're trying to reverse some of the damage. But sadly though, what boys and the young people will have actually been like disadvantaged by this and they're very negatively in you know, like in the past by all of this. And also, in like today's episode, I get super personal. In fact, I, in fact, I almost felt embarrassed as I was writing this blog post was I was revealing the cold hard truth about my own experience of this and to bring us some of the very harmful and some of the very damaging stuff that I sort of did to myself. And to be honest, I'm actually quite surprised I didn't hospitalise myself at like one point though. So that's how bad it got though. It's a really interesting, really brutally honest. And this is just going to be such a great, brilliant podcast episode for all of us. So moving on to the psychology news section, we're reading from the British Psychological Society Research Digest. And can I just say quickly, it's so great to be back doing the podcast again, live, you know, instead of um, having to record it all and, and schedule it. Oh, I, I do love this podcast. So, the first one is, who's there to blame when partially automated vehicles crash? When a traditional non-automated car, <laughs> it's a, a pedestrian, and there is no well, mitigating circumstances, the public is a clear on who is to blame, the driver. Swap that for a fully auto- autonomous vehicle, and the answer is a, is a, is a different, but still clear, the manufacturer. But what if the driver is using a partially automated vehicle, of which there are now now what many models of on the market? A new online study in Scientific Reports finds that drivers of these vehicles are assigned most of the blame for the crashes, which the team argues they can't reasonably uh, um, avoid. Uh, this work is in Poland because, as Nick Beckers of uh, Delif uh, University of Technology and, uh, and colleagues point out, public opinion on uh, this matter could help shape the future, the uh, future of the vehicle design and also legislation. This I actually think is quite an interesting point, point though, because of course, if something is partially automated, 
then you are still in, uh, yeah, well, you are still in, like, on a trial of it, and you still have most of the functions and most of the bearings on any, like, potential outcomes. So, yeah, this is definitely something we do need to research for the future, because one of the massive problems that, um, us in the author space is a finding, and actually about artificial inlight intelligence, is that because the law is so slow, and because most laws are done so ad hoc, like they're done after the event, event that um, lots of authors are actually being like disadvantaged by the growth of like um, AI. Though and I'm not going to go into the full debate there because I think it's quite exciting. But I also know there are massive like, limitations and massive legal implications that are still just being explored. Even though the market is actually being a flooded though. Um, with different artificial intelligence tools. So very interesting. And I actually hope that because of this research, hopefully... Um, when it comes to laws and uh, legislation that are surrounding um, autonomous cars, hopefully though, the laws will be slightly ahead of the technology. But to be honest, I like a doubt it though. But it's still really, really interesting uh, from both the legal and the behavioural perspective. So the second one is... And then it's also like, like last because there's only two like this week. Study challenges the idea that we prefer faces that we've seen more often. The more often that you're exposed to something, the more you will like it. This is a well established mere exposure effect which has been found to apply to raw ethic from sounds to paintings. It occurred to Jason Chow at Bembit University and their colleagues that this effect might be exploited to help older people to settle more quickly into care homes, repeatedly showing a, 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 a new resident photos of images of a caretaker's and fellow residents will hopefully allow them to adapt more easily. Yeah, that sounds great. It sounds effective. So let's see what actually happens. Based on other research, the team suspected that a mere egg exposure effect for faces that might actually be stronger in older people than than in younger people. So they first decided to run a study to explore this, but as they report in a, a paper in Psychology and Aging, to their surprise, they found not only no evidence for this effect in older people, but no evidence for it in younger people either. For researchers, this raises some serious questions. Even does the mere egg exposure effect really exist? Wow, okay, that is actually a brilliant finding. Especially because at university we've been doing so much on the replication crisis, how to do good research, and all of that sort of stuff. So, if this is a good study in itself, and of course I've not checked out the methodology yet and I have no intention of it, to be honest. Um, if this is a good study, then this could have massive implications for the field. And to be honest, we will actually have to go back to the original studies supporting the mere exposure effect to find out if those studies replicate. So yeah, this could, I don't know, to be honest, I really doubt this is going to be like the next um, replication crisis, but it really is interesting to find, or to actually find a study so that don't show evidence of this. Yeah, really, really interesting. 
because the mere exposure effect is so major in social psychology. In fact, in quite a few of my books, I reference it because it is so popular in the literature and there's so much evidence for it. But, uh, okay, no. but is all of those evidences are correct uh, because you've also got the publication bias. Really, really interesting. Yeah. Hmm. Very much so. So, I hope you enjoyed the psychology news section. So, let's move on to a personal update. So, we're moving on to the personal update. So, as I said in the introduction, I didn't realise how excited I like, would be there, but it will actually come back and uh, and actually do the uh, podcast. I really have like missed all of you, but because even though you've been listening to me every week, it's been like three weeks since I've actually done the a podcast. So hello again, and <laughs> wow, I've not quite felt this like um missing a feeling though why for actually quite a, a while though. So um, I'm so uh, grateful to be uh, back there. So a massive thank you to all of you like wonderful listeners though why for like keeping uh, listening, helping uh, to like uh, spread the words uh, about the uh, podcast because we really are all uh, like friends and like a family here though. <laughs> Okay then, so we're um, actually moving on to the personal updates, the uh, proper bit. So, university has been very busy like so far though, and if there were any first year or like second year students, when people say third year is a jump, absolutely believe them. It's not a scary jump, but I really am having to prioritise my time a lot more though because I still want to do the podcast, I still want to do all of my other projects, but university does take up a lot of time though, but I really am in like enjoying it and most importantly, and as I've mentioned on the podcast before, you've got to be kind to yourself, you've got to protect your mental health first of all, and you've got to prioritise and if you don't get everything done that you actually want to, just be kind to yourself. It's not the end of the world. So that so that has definitely been a hard lesson though, whether I've learned over the past like few weeks well weeks ever but thankfully we've actually started data collection for my um my final year project and it's going really, really well though. Yes, there've been tons of techni- yeah, well, like technical problems, and the amount of jokes uh, that I've made about oh yeah, like we you pay like ten thousand pounds at like university, and they uh, give us like bad uh, computers. To be honest, by the end of the week, that was not a joke. That was just fact. <laughs> But it was all like fun though, and the participants, they're great. Well, because this is the first time that we're running it properly, and I'm not, and I'm not sure if I've ever explained the study. I'm not going to explain it now because this is just a personal update, not a podcast episode. But because this is the first time that we've actually like run it properly, we're just doing two puppets this a week. We've now finished up to four next week. And then we're doing six the week after, and then that's, and then we should do another two week of the sixes. But I am really like, you know, joining it, and it is such an interesting study though. At some point, probably after data collection, I will do a proper talk about it on the podcast. But just know, like, for now though, um, if you're a first or a second year student, then your final year and your final year project, if you get a good one, then this can actually be so much fun though, because it really is. But stepping away from the whole like psychology stuff at the moment, 
very, very exciting news on uh, the uh, Kickstarter front. So, if you absolutely love mystery, romance, and fancy stories with a like, holiday twist, then you are in luck because right now, and uh, and uh, till the third of November, I'm uh, currently running to have the holiday egg extravaganza kick starter. And uh, what this is, it is uh, basically a a a fiction advent calendar. So uh, from the um first of December, twenty twenty two. To the 1st of January 2023, you probably will get a short story a day. So, but these are all based around the like, holiday themes. They were like sometimes, well, for example, like sometimes the like holiday season is actually like just a setting, but sometimes they were they're more about the holiday spirit though. None of these like real like, religious uh, stories, and so many backers have already joined the uh, project like so far though. So if you want a like a gripping a mystery, a yeah, spellbinding a uh, fancy, or a, a sweet moving emotional romance to enjoy uh, this like holiday season, then uh, definitely check it out. And as always, I, will, I always have love to your thoughts and feelings on uh, today's episode. So you can always email me, connorwiley.net. Leave a comment on the show notes at connorwiley.net forward slash podcast. And you can always tweet me on Twitter at sci fi Wiley. I always love to hear from all of you because it really helps make the podcast feel more like a conversation. And you can always comment. On the Facebook post at Con Wisely, psychology author. And today's episode has been sponsored by Anul Psychology, the causes and treatments of depression, anxiety, and more. So, where well, this is actually a, like, a great a sponsor for today's episode, because even though but this book actually doesn't like going into like, eating disorders. Uh, body image. This a uh, great, really easy uh, one. Some book uh, actually does uh, cover a lot of uh, really interesting uh, psychology topics. Uh, topics. Uh, topics. Uh, for example, the uh, biological, cognitive, and the social causes of the uh, of the oppression, the different types of uh, anger, anxiety, and also the uh, different causes and uh, schizophrenia. And so many more fascinating topics. So, uh, for example, example like the uh, classification of uh, like mental health conditions uh, and uh, the actual biases uh, that can uh, go on in uh, diagnosis. So, but this great book really does cover so much in a minimal conversation and in engaging tone. Believe me, this is nothing like a, a boring textbook. So, where that is abnormal psychology, the causes and trends of depression, anxiety, and more. Available from all major ebook retailers, the payback and the hardback version from Amazon, your local bookstore, or local library if you request it. And you can also buy it directly from me at payhip.com forward slash conwisely. Um, so let's move on to the content part of today's episode. So we're moving on to the content part of today's episode. So we're going to be talking about body negativity in the boys and why is this a, a silent a problem. And because I've already done a uh, quite a lot in the uh, introduction to this, I'm actually just uh, going like, to dive into it today. Body Negativity in Boys One of the miniature themes of this uh, podcast is uh, that I always like to in- investigate uh, and uh, explore areas and help uh, to, uh, to uh, bring them uh, to the uh, attention of all of us. For example, that's why I investigated suicide on the podcast. How mental health conditions could in fact be 
adaptations and not disorders amongst other topics. Therefore, I really wanted to highlight how our boys that can be very badly affected by body image issues and why yeah, and why yeah, this is not a, a problem limited to the girls. In addition, the author of the book being you, the body image book for boys mentioned that young men and the boys are often at a complete loss when it when it comes to talking about their body image concerns, even if these are these are concerns start in early life. And before I actually start talking about the uh, the uh, studies and the research side of this argument. I actually want to give you a bit of a um, personal story though and why I'm actually interested in this topic from a personal beat perspective. Since when I was a child, I was a beast and as you can uh, imagine, I was a very easy target for bullies. So I was really bullied for years about it actually. And even though basically like right now, I sort of change between underweight and healthy weight basically depending on the week and my own attitude god that sounds really rad but it's true i still i still basically always think of myself as fat and sometimes it is um to be honest i probably do have like a sub syndrome or eating you know like eating disorder to some extent I guess then though, and just in case you're not clear what subsin a journal means, it means that um, you don't meet the diagnostic criteria, but you sort of almost do and you still have the condition. condition. So to be honest, even though it was under control, sort of, it sort of wasn't for my first year at university, but I do go on to that actually now in the uh, blog post. So to be honest, even saying this now is actually quite difficult because during my first year of a university, several people did suspect I had to, and they, yeah, but I had like developed a like eating a disorder because I basically barely ate. And to be honest, even though I did eat two meals a day, they were extremely small. They were sort of like dangerously small. Yeah, and to be honest, I was barely eating a thousand calories a day, and to be, and I was also doing extreme amounts of exercise as to sort of burn off the old weight, but also pretty much destroying whatever I ate as you like coming in though. So looking back, I absolutely know that was not healthy, and to be honest, I'm glad I didn't hospitalise myself. But to be honest, I think, I don't know, I think if I didn't come back for my second year, and to be honest, if COVID didn't happen, I was so I was forced to come back early, I don't know, to be honest, I doubt it, but I don't know, it, it was a risk because of what was happening, what happened the year before, and that I will not go into on the podcast. But it just like goes to show how powerful bullying can be. And whilst there are a lot of other factors that are more or less influential for other people, that's the very short version of my story. In addition, McLee and all 2018 18, found that even boys are, are as, they, as young as 6 years old, I believe that muscles make uh, make a boys look a uh, better and one of the real dangers of it is a particular belief that is that before puberty boys aren't adept to uh, build anything uh, looking like the uh, bulky muscles of the uh, bodybuilders resulting in uh, in a lot of like younger boys are being disappointed in their bodies from a very early age Personally, I think that's just heartbreaking, and it's a massive shame that somewhere in our society we've created an atmosphere 
where pre-teenagers feel that they need to get muscles to look good. I don't think pre-teens, to be honest, I don't think anyone should actually be so obsessed up with that or actually or actually feel like they need to focus on it. And possibly connecting this to my own, a story this concern about your body image isn't just a superficial concern, no, but well, because, it, because it can and does have a very serious consequences, like eating disorders. Because one-fourth to one-third of the eating disorder patients are male, as I would as eating disorders are among some of the deadliest mental health conditions. And uh, there's a website link in uh, the reference section of the uh, blog post if they, yeah, would well, like, if they uh, actually just want to, like, um, check it out. So, yes, it is very, very fair to say that body image issues can kill people. Finally, yeah, for this uh, section, a uh, yeah, very common uh, surname uh, finding that is uh, that this uh, problem isn't going away since a growing number of uh, boys, uh, as much as an 11% growth, uh, gays uh, and all, 2021, found that uh, boys are using um, steroids or supplements to increase their muscle mass, as well as TikTok seems to be only in encouraging these mental adaptive body image behaviours by increasing the popularity of the, the trends like um, dry uh, scooping protein powder. And to be honest, I have absolutely no idea what dry uh, um, scooping is, but it turns out uh, what it is is that it's a way you take a, a pre-workout con assumption of uh, chalky powders without dissolving them in water first. I don't know why you'd want to do that, because it's dangerous, because I remember, because I don't know if you podcast listeners remember, but a few years ago, there was what was known as the flower challenge. I never did it, none of my friends did actually. <laughs> well, <laughs> well, well, surprisingly enough, and I remember the danger of it, of it, well, was that if you take a teaspoon of a dry powder, it can actually, it's something along the lines that it can coat your throat and you can choke. I don't know if that's true, but I know that was the danger. And if it is true, then this is like the exact same um, principle. Very dangerous, very silly thing to do, in uh, my personal uh, um, opinion. Why don't we talk about um, a body image issues in the boys? Now, well, this is one of my faith areas to a uh, gas floor because I really am interested in why certain mental health conditions are steered or limited towards only a certain uh, populations or genders, or at least that's what the uh, mainstream wants us uh, to believe. Thankfully, though, unlike um, other areas of like mental health, like uh, telling female rape survivors in uh, the last century uh, that uh, what they uh, guess being is didn't matter, body image a conversation around boys isn't quite as a dog, but it's still out, but it's still outrageous and it still needs to change. Since the reason why a body image issues and the negativity surrounds girls and the women so much is it because out of the concerns over the decades long marketing and objectifying and basically a society telling women that they had to be thin, attractive and, uh, and feminine if they wanted to have any hope of succeeding in that society. Well, that's the gist anyway. Therefore, to combat the damage of the marketing and of the other societal level factors have done over the decades, 
focus on was uh, protecting the uh, mental health of the women and young uh, girls. However, this has caused men and boys to have a uh, lot of uh, trouble speaking out about their own uh, mental health in uh, general, but especially uh, surrounding uh, their body image. Furthermore, in uh, the book uh, Being You, the uh, body image book for boys, a lot of boys emphasise how were they were in the barracks about taking off their t-shirt at the swimming pool right, and generally just showing off of their bodies. This is something I can certainly relate to. Again, because um, I truly believe I will always see myself as a fat. And even now, even though I'm not, I, <laughs> at an intellectual level, I know that. Um, yeah, but I don't take my um, t-shirt off on like holidays in front of my parents if they like um, bought me clothes and they uh, and they like want to see like um, do they fit and like how do I like look in them. And um, to be honest, I am actually seriously concerned about how my future relationships could be affected by this. Like, could it affect intimacy or whatever? And those topics that I'm actually going to stop talking about on, on the podcast. Like, Furthermore, as I've repeatedly mentioned on uh, the uh, podcast before, boys and men are far less likely than women and uh, girls uh, to seek out help for their mental health and uh, their physical health concerns uh, due to a, a number of uh, stupid societal and uh, personal factors uh, like the outrageous belief about talking about feelings that makes you weak, real women uh, don't a uh, crime and all of the other utter rubbish uh, that I hate beyond words. Because it's because of those dumb myths that are causing us so much damage to the mental health and well-being of our men and the women in that society. Anyway, the problem, the problem uh, with this brand of masculinity, the type where men are only allowed to be seen as strong, stoic and independent, is that it stops them from coming forward. As well as Lee Journal 2016 shows about recognising and having an awareness of the body image issue is the first step in obtaining treatments for it. Therefore, if the boys are scared of being ridiculed or stigmatised by coming forward, then uh, they will continue to try to manage their body image the uh, stress alone, and I know that doesn't work. Also, what I like want to uh, mention there with that before we move on uh, to the um, uh, last section of the uh, podcast episode, that now that I've been researching this, to be honest, now I know how lucky I am, and I suppose I really do need to try and be a lot more careful about my own body image. I do need to try and like be a main and positive. I think in the future, dating... Well, I would like to think, though, like, that it helps, but because hopefully, like, that way people will actually tell me yeah, that I'm, like, beautiful and that they like me and my body. But it's a long way off for personal and um, situational reasons. And again, though, this is just my economic and my experience. And I know that like, a lot of other people well, would have other egg experiences of truth. But this is just me trying to be open and honest and try and like, connect this topic to what's happened to me in my past if that makes any sense. Overall, weathers will only intensify and worsen the current mental health crisis in the teenage population, and to be honest, this will kill people too. How do we improve a boy's body image? 
So now that we know how less serious our body image issues are and their serious consequences, we need to look at how what and how we can uh, be a service and a start to help these uh, boys. Firstly, we need the boys to acknowledge that they actually have these concerns, and this is very uh, typical uh, to be something that they are ashamed of. Thankfully, not everyone will be ashamed of, that, of their bodies, but it is okay if they are, are they? because as psychologists and therapists cannot do anything unless a person admits that they are experiencing psychological distress and they want to change this. That's something that was actually critical because of... Um, I was talking to Electra earlier about it. Additionally, we can help these boys further to understand that a body dissatisfaction is a natural reaction to have in our appearance-based culture. That really does bombard us all with messages about the importance of how well we look not who we are. Also, I have to admit that there's a lot of money to be made if they increase in the securities we have about our appearance. Since these pictures could make people buy makeup, steroids, gym membership and so many more tools we could use to achieve this a ridiculously unhealthy version of the ideal beauty. And another point to raise is why would any industry, let alone the wellness and the beauty industry, stop at, a, at a catering for women and their girls when they could double their profits by targeting young boys and men? It's a numbers game for sure. Conclusion To wrap up this podcast episode, I actually don't want to focus on the topic for change. Instead, I want to focus on a message for you. Because we really are perfect of the way that we are. In society, we don't need to be traditionally beautiful, perfect, or some messed up version of Andosis, the Greek god of beauty. At least I think that's what he was, from what I remember. And if you would meet the people who I think that that is the only way to be, just to leave them. They're not going to be a healthy influence in your life. And it is seriously about time that for the sake of our mental health, the well-being of our young people and society as a whole, that we start moving away from this appearance-based focus on uh, on society. We need to start understanding and that but everyone is so perfect in their own way, and that we don't all need to look like models and uh, muscle gods, or whatever the kids are calling it like these days. I seriously don't know like, what they are, because I can promise you this. If you don't accept yourself and if you allow body image issues to eat away in a side of you, then you really are playing a dangerous game. After this episode, I know how lucky I was. I was a like a few years ago, but I know a lot of people aren't so lucky. So please be careful, accept yourself and have the body that you want. Not what someone else wants you to have. So I really hope that you enjoyed today's episode and that you got something out of it. I definitely know that I did and I really did enjoy it. If you know someone who would enjoy today's episode, then please share it with them. I'm always really grateful when you wonderful people help us spread the words about the podcast. And definitely check out the Holiday Egg Extravaganza on Kickstarter. And there's a link in the um, podcast description. 
especially if you want some mathematic fiction this holiday season. And also check out a normal psychology, the causes and treatments of depression, anxiety and more. Available in all of visual places. So have a great day everyone and I'll see you next time. Thanks for listening today. I hope you enjoyed it. If you want to see the show notes, then please go to ConnorWhitesley.net. And if you want a free Ada Book Psychology box set, then please go to ConnorWhitesley.net. Have a great day and I'll see you next time.